welcome. We bid you welcome, John Clauser, Johnny Metal, the Metal Dad, coming to you from my music corner of the world. With me today is, of course, my faithful co-captain from the Music Nut program, John the Music Nut. Look who we have in the music corner today. You know him from Sea of Tranquility, from The Contrarians, from Brave Words, from Banger, from podcasts, from God knows how much other things are out there. Martin Popoff, my friend, welcome to my music corner. Very cool. Thanks for having me. It's a pretty interesting topic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so today's topic, we begin a series that will carry us forth through the remainder of this year. I'm thinking about calling this series up, going up to the limit. We're going to talk about the chick with the chainsaw, as as uh, as we've heard it called. The first, yeah. the first except. Oh, oh of course. Look at that. Uh, I I I always am so envious when when uh, when Martin brings up these side copies. That is so cool. So who's who's? I got to ask who's all signed on that. Well, I guess this would be uh, Udo, Peter, Wolf, and Stefan, and not and not York Fisher. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I always, I've always curious because you can never see the signatures when you flash those. It's always really cool. But yeah. So, yeah. so we are going to do this kind of like how we have done the uh, the Wasp Wednesday series, the Dangerous Toys, and Judas Priest and Armored Saint, and we're going to go week by week. But this series, every album by by except is going to have a different guest. There's no, there's not going to be at least this point no repeat guests. So you're going to see a different person on every single show this week. So uh, with that said, there's no a there's no chart action to talk about this album uh, released in 1979, originally on Brain Records. Um, so, Martin, I, we would love to hear how you got in touch with the Chick with the Chainsaw album, what your first thoughts were, and then whatever thoughts you have that you want to talk about with this. Okay, well, b bear in mind, first of all, I actually did do an Accept book, but it's long out of oh. print now. But you can get this at uh, Zunior.com for like 10 bucks Canadian. But uh, yeah, the print version's long gone. I, did, I didn't go re recheck anything there, but I did make some notes. And uh, so, yeah, so basically what we have here, yeah, to, to answer your question, um, boy, let me think about this. So, okay, I now I know the answer. So the first Accept album I ever got, was the second self-titled, so their second album, right? And was not very impressed with it at all. And it wasn't that cover. It was more the, the staff hilt, sword hilt thing. Right. Um, so I got that in Canada, a Canadian copy, was not very impressed um, because they tried kind of an ACDC sort of direction on it. It's it's a little more commercial. And then uh, pretty sure I got Breaker next and was blown away. Breaker was amazing. And then later ones, and then maybe Chick with Chainsaw came up somewhere, record two, record three, record four. You know, mine is an import copy. I, I got it as an import. Um, so mine's made in Germany. Um, so yeah, that's how I got it. Um, and, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit off air before we started. I, and you said, what kind of debut is this and how good a debut is this? What it reminds me of is um, Aerosmith's debut and Judas Priest's debut in that. And maybe a little bit Iron Maiden's debut. So so let's go. Let's go Aerosmith with the, with the with the whole um kind of amateurish and and uh, and slightly not league not greatly recorded um let's go with uh, let's go with rockarola because it sounds like um just a slightly inferior version um all things considered uh than than you know rockarola to sad wings this would be except to breaker and skipping the middle one um and let's go with Iron Maiden to say that uh, to give it some props and say it's actually really quite good. So it's it's 80 percent of the way there to Breaker, whereas Iron Maiden is 80 percent of the way there to Killer, uh, Killer, Killers. Yeah. And um, so so th that's kind of where it stands as a debut. Um, so I would say so, first of all, um, I, I guess to go through the tracks. So, well, let, let's talk a little more in general terms, I, I think. The production on this reminds me of, so yeah, let's bring in another debut. The production and the whole, mis, you know, melange or or vibe of it also reminds me of uh, Motley Crue, Too Fast for Love, 
moving into that band, changing things and getting a new producer and moving to Tom Werman and basically changing their sound a lot. Um, so this is this is the wild, loose and fast lightning in a bottle, hard to contain energy of a of a band doing something quite remarkable. So this is the cool thing about this record. I I almost feel like, um, you know, this is the first band besides Scorpions to really deliberately uh, come up with something uh, deliberately heavy metal. Like it's almost like they're they're jumping in and and beginning the new wave of British heavy metal way over in Germany where you're not supposed to really know what's going on um, before anybody else is. Because you think of all those Scandinavian bands, they all they all more or less follow the new wave of British heavy metal. But this is right in here in 1979 with a pretty heavy modern sounding album, except for the production. But but in terms of the songwriting and the riffs, it's it's up there. Right. Um but, you know, I think I think what they're drawing from is is probably some in for I, I probably should have, uh, you know, reread this because there's a whole chapter in here on this album. But um, they're they're probably picking up uh, inspiration the same way Merciful Fate did from Judas Priest, but more so Scorpions. I mean, this is a very, very Scorpions like album uh, in a lot of ways. Um, so, yeah, just to go through them quickly. So Lady Lou. Uh, so slightly technical Judas Priest uh, style song here or typical except but missing, um, you know, the rock solid drumming and rhythm section and, and missing the great production that we're going to get starting with Breaker. Um, it's a little bit uh, pared back and simplified. So it's more a little bit like British Steel Judas Priest rather than highly technical late 70s Judas Priest. Um, crap drumming. The drumming is just not very good on it. Um, you know, it's it sounds all trapsy, like uh, a little bit like uh, the way I described those those early Blue Oyster Cult albums with Albert Bouchard. It sounds jazzy and trapsy and small sort of thing. So it's a it's a little bit like that open hi hat. Hi hats are a little too loud. Tired of Me is amazing. Um, really cool, great chords, really kind of emotional. Got the ah backing vocals. That's that's the other cool thing about this album. You've got these backing vocals on it that sound like sweet backing vocals, um, or a little bit like queen backing vocals. So they do some they do some work on that. And Tired of Me definitely has that with the tired of me, got the back to the wall, and all that sort of thing, right? Um, really cool. Um and then Sea Winds is slow, dark Scorpions ballad, basically. Um, so they're really this is where you really start to draw the connections to Scorpions, because when they do, there's uh, there's uh, hang on, there's uh, just the just yeah, just the one mellow song on this album. Right. Uh, hang on. No, there's there's kind of two. Glad to be alone is, is a little like this, too. Yes. So, yeah, electric and acoustic mixed in. So they're trying to uh, to be ambitious and, and, and put some things into the arrangement. There's just, unfortunately it's a, it's kind of a noisy, um, screechy mid rangey production. There's not enough bottom end of the thing. Um, take him in. My heart is, is pretty cool. Uh, crazy drumming on this again. The drumming reminds me of Tommy Lee for some reason. It's like this wild man drumming on, on this album. Um, but, uh, it, and it modulates it's hooky, uh, more of those ah backup vocals on it. Uh, Sounds of War's uh, Sounds of War is my favorite song on the album with that reverse fade and the count in your one, two, three, and then down air. Really cool modern metal on this. Really evil, you know, Diablos in Musica sort of thing on it. Um, you know, with that uh, seems to be the end of this rotten land. You know, it's it's really kind of cool. That's the other thing I should mention as we as we move along here. Uh, the other parallel with the Scorpions is you've got Peter Baltes in there doing some of the singing. So you've got him doing the the obscure Ali John Roth style vocals on this album. Right. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it's a little flat and pitchy um, over to side two. Side two's not as good. Uh, Free me now. It's got this D beat thrashy speed metal kind of thing going on. Um, and they're just not locked down enough as a rhythm section to pull it off. It just sounds punky. Right. Um, but it, this one really has those sweet backing vocals. Um, and glad to be lone is very much like scorpions in trance, like the big doomy power ballad with the, you know, slow, but it power chords in it as well. Um, that's rock and roll. Oddly is like free me now. Again, you got another fast one with the, with the trashy junky drumming and junky production kind of thing. Total speed, speed woman though. And with the, uh, with the, Hey, little woman, except tonight in there, right. As well. Um, 
And then uh, Hell Driver, uh, kind of chunky, like take them in my heart a little bit. Um, but this one's sounding a little too 70s. And that's the other cool thing about this record. It doesn't sound like an Eastern European band or a Russian band. They sound pretty with it, right? They sound like like we've we've absorbed these Western influences pretty good. And and we're making songs that don't sound like uh, like I say a Russian a Russian metal band in the mid '80s, like those completely embarrassing, horrible, horrible sounding records you'd get from Poland or Hungary or whatever, right? Um, and uh, but this one's a little a little BTO, uh, like I say, a vocal melody follows the riff, which doesn't sound very good. You know, usually I don't like when that happens. And then the last one is uh street fighter and it's got cowbell in it the previous one had some cowbell as well um melodic party rocker this is their get ready uh like of off of um you know a restless and wild this is them this is the only party rocker really on this on this album the rest of it's pretty pretty darn judas priesty and mm -hmm. uh and you know euro teutonic you know uh sort of metal so yeah it's uh it's definitely it sounds like the demo version of breaker uh it really does uh and that's that's that parallel uh and then and then the anomaly is the second one it's just a weird record that doesn't sound like any of their records right uh because that they had a uh you know a, a specific sort of mission in mind so uh yeah pr pretty pretty darn good and and for 1979 like i've done podcast episodes looking at the heaviest album of the 70s the he you know the heaviest if you include live albums there's a clear answer it's unleashed in the east there's nothing even close um but motorhead and stuff like this but but for for you know to get an album this heavy from not britain or Canada I mean, Canada doesn't have anything, but uh, the States or Britain is, is pretty commendable. And, uh, and like I say, Scorpions leads the way, but, but yeah, very, very impressive, creditable uh, debut. There you go. All right. Wow. That's uh there you go, folks. That's a, that's a great, a great analysis on, on this one. So uh, John, I'm going to turn it to you, my friend and see what you see, if you have anything to add to what uh, Martin had to say, and then we'll hear your take on it. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you, Martin. So, band trying to find their sound. Production's really raw. Like Martin said, you hear a lot of Scorpions in here. And not just in the structures, but Wolf Hoffman's trying to find his guitar sound, too. A lot of these solos are Uli John Roth-like. To the point where you're waiting for Uli to come in and say, Sing on the doghouse. Think of you all the time, you know? So, <laughs> but Lady Lose a Cool Opener. Um, lyrically, they didn't find their, they didn't find their way yet because it's a lot of boy meets girl lyrics, which you would never hear later by except, I mean, I mean, they're singing about more important topics as time goes on, but here the, the lyrics are really basic. Um, he has a lot of early scorpions, um, decent chorus. We have the rhythmic gallop during the verses. So it's a decent opener. I like it. The only this is the only um album that Frank Fiedrich played drums on too, just to let you know and then we would get Stefan Kaufman from this point for a, a while. Tired of me, yeah, that's definitely heavier, better song. Um, it has the backing harmonies, like some of those sweet and queen harmonies. I hear that a little bit in early Scorpions too, like uh, and the Oli albums particularly. Um, you have that. You have nice call and response here between uh, Wolf and the band as far as the singing and the guitar are playing. So that's pretty strong. Sea Winds seems out of place, but it's a fine ballad. And that's how a lot of Peter's songs were on his first three albums, except for one I'm going to talk about in a minute or two. Um, it just doesn't sound like Scorpions, although it's well done. Take them in my heart. Udo's doing it except what Ozzy did in Sabbath. He's just singing with the riff. Um, it's it's decent, but again, they're trying to find their way lyrically. Um, her body was immaculate. Her hair was kind of gold. It's a little clumsy, but again, you know, you have the the uh, language barrier here that gets in the way of this album. I think eventually they would get past this too. Once uh, Gabby started writing all the lyrics, Sounds of War, yes, 
I have a big asterisk on this because I this is one of the best songs on the album. Here comes the Uli like dive bomb solos. Funny, it's, we all use the asterisks, don't we? Look at that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's yeah. gonna come up as clear. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like free me now too. There's the asterisk there. <laughs> um another thing, um, sounds of war. I mean, it's very good. The guitar playing's really strong on it, but it's it is definitely different. Definitely different than what they would do before because it's heavy, but it's heavier in a different kind of way. Free me now. Here's now that energy and intensity that except would be well known for pre speed metal. Here comes those scorpions harmonies again. It's just like a straight up blitz of a song, but it's really good. It's it reminds you of the heavier stuff they would do later, just like a prototype for it. Glad to be alone. Yes, it does have that feel of the Scorpions ballads from Uli. It reminds me of Evening Wind without the class. Um, um, again, the so the lyrics are a little clumsy. After a few dates with you, I was glad to be alone. Again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so I mean, again, they were just trying to find their way musically and lyrically. It starts out with a short solo, just like a lot of Scorpion songs would do, even when um, Matthias Jabs was in the band. That's rock and roll. They're trying to go with a fast-paced, fun rock song here. It's very spirited with their Hey Little Woman, woman lyrics. Um, but again, you hear the potential. There's a nice musical bridge on it. But, you know, they're just finding their way. It's It's decent. Hell Driver rocks like hell, but it's very primitive. Uh, that's pretty cool. Street Fighter, again, there's there's the musical translation, but oh, I'm sorry, the lyrical translation, but musically it's pretty decent. But the, again, the lyrics, your body looks perfect, your face like a rat, you know. So, <laughs> so sometimes with the solos with Wolf, sometimes. He sounds like Wolf, and sometimes he sounds like Uli. By the time we get to I'm a Rebel, he sounds like himself. The production, again, isn't that strong. It's very um, muddy. It's just not that good. They would fix the production on the next album for more or less. The fact that the clarity between the instruments is very good, but the uh, rawness was taken out of the guitars, too. So with this album, yeah, it's you could tell there was potential. They just hadn't found their way yet. Sometimes I like to talk about albums that are different yet interesting. This is only interesting part of the time. You can hear the potential, but you know, they're gonna definitely improve on this pretty quick. I give it a five. Okay. All right. Five out of ten. I yeah. I I give it more like a seven point five out of ten. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I think they did a pretty good job on it. And I just want to come in, the, the cover, the album cover is very Scorpions-like as well, right? That's true. You know, it's it's a little surreal. It's a little kraut rock. Um, it's a little arty. Uh, you know, it's got a woman in there. So you've got, you know, In Trance, uh, Love at First Sting. Um, what's what's the other one I'm thinking? Love Drive, of course. Um, so yeah, it's got it's got that cool vibe. You know, it's not particularly sexual and it's got a little bit of uh, humor to it, right? So definitely yeah, cool cover. That's, I just uh, didn't know they made chainsaws that big. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I think I think they make them even bigger, right? And then <laughs> and then as they get bigger, you've got someone on both sides of it. Yeah, I think exa- they make those too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Cool. Thank you, John. All right. So uh so my take with this is I I really became familiar with Accept in the mid 80s when I was getting ready to see them in concert before opening for Iron Maiden. And that's really when I became probably aware of them. Um, they were touring metal hard at the time. So, um, and I just picked up a guitar magazine with, with uh, guitar tab, the balls to the wall. So that's kind of where I got in with accept. So I actually owned this once on cassette many, many years ago. Could I, can I tell you if I listened to it back then? Probably not. 
<laughs> I don't know why. I think I had, if you look behind me and just what I've got behind me, yeah, there's how the heck do you have time to listen to music? But anyway, um, yeah, this, you, this is definitely one of those albums where they were throwing spaghetti against the wall, trying to find what sticks. And um, uh, so, yeah, Lady Lou, you get the, uh, Again, strong opener, like like Martin and, and John said, you get some good gallops going on. But yeah, lyrically, I, I might as well not repeat what Dave said. Lyrically, there you don't hear, you would not hear Udo be talking about these kind of things for too much longer, <laughs> you know, or singing about these kind of topics. It's just this, you just didn't, you got away from that kind of sound. We always align this one, Lady Lou with Crocus Smelly Nelly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. oh boy yeah uh you know a good good opener though uh uh tired of me i probably i kind of like tired of me is pro probably one of my favorites from this album for me I, I don't know why it made me feel a little ted nugent like in the music i don't know why it, ted nugent hit me but uh um yeah just another lyrically kind of just the whole relationship thing and you know, all that kind of stuff. But uh, you get, you finally get that Udo vocal or you, you get that really gruffy kind of sound where you really didn't get that on Lady Lou. It was very much of a cleaner, a cleaner vocal. But, uh, you know, you guys were both mentioning about the background vocals being this almost like sweet and queen like. Well, they go, it's it, how I, I've, I'm, I'll, we'll figure this out as we go along. But how long did it take before they go from these higher pitched uh, singing sounds? to say like balls to the wall where they sound like you're you're in some german camp you know and everybody and you hear all the the deeper voice saying you you kind of get away from that you know the whole gang vocal kind of thing is more of a instead of this higher pitched um sound i don't know that was something i i, I had determined sea winds uh i liked peter's peter's vocals were different um again sometimes they worked sometimes they didn't uh this i guess i guess grant and the april wine series got to me because this kind of felt like a really early april wine song for some reason like maybe something from the first couple of albums or something like that before miles really started taking off with the songwriting i don't know that's kind of the feeling that i got from from sea winds um i think this i think peter's voice works better than udo's for a song like this but yes. um but i thought i thought it was i thought you know, decent ballad. Um, let's see. T take him in my heart. Rowdy rocker. Udo just trying to pull off. Here's what I put down. Udo trying to do his best Bon Scott or Alex Harvey impersonation. Mm. That was how I that was how I felt his delivery was coming through. Um, you get a good lyrical guitar solo. You know, Udo's voice in that last vocal with that higher screechy vocal that he would become very, very known for. You get the false ending, you know, leading into an act, uh, appropriate ending. Um, sounds of war, you get another Peter led song, um, you know, about the horrors of war, of course, to me, the riff, I'm like, Hmm, I wonder if, I wonder if Gene Simmons or Brian Adams got this for war machine. They kind of, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, it's a common type of riff. I'm sure it's, it's easily, easily copied over the years. Good solo. I liked all the all the solo effects that that Wolf was doing here to kind of mask 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 that war sound. Um, flip the side over, uh, uh, free me now. Another up tempo rocker, interesting gang vocal with the chorus. Uh, bass to me sounded a little le a Lemmy like, uh, very Motorhead like, very punky. Um, let's see. Um, Let's see. Uh, uh, glad to be alone. You get that nice solo in the beginning. I just um, wanted to be reminded of what the record looks like. I, I forgot. Oh, so there you go. So that's what your oh wow the you, brain version. Very nice. I don't think most brains look like this. Uh, silver on black like that. That's kind of kind of weird. Or is it white? No, it's silver. Yeah, silver on black. I was gonna say. I think that's the first time I've ever seen something on Brain Records, but because um, I don't, I've never seen a uh, a brain version of of this album. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, another slower paced song, The Glad to Be Alone, just another one of those relationship songs, which again just seems so weird for <laughs> seems so weird yeah. for except. Uh that's rock and roll, another high energy rocker, kind of ACDC on steroids. You get a good dual guitar section. Just another day in the life of a rock and roller, pretty much. That's about the best way I can describe this song. Hell Driver, 
uh, to me, this is kind of except taking on the Judas Priest idea with the Judas Priest character. You know, Judas Priest is always known for their characters, you know, the, the exciter, the sinner, the tyrant, the uh, the hellion, the um, battalion, the, I mean, I'm, that's not a song, but the- Hell Rider. <laughs> Hell, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The, the Sentinel and all these, all those great character songs, you know, where they're singing about a certain character. Um, yeah, just another kind of reckless, another, another song where I kind of felt an Alex Harvey vocal delivery. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Street Fire ending the song. I, I, you get those kind of Rolling Stone like doo doos going on in the background, which I thought was kind of weird. Uh, again, if you have a fever, uh, you will be satiated because the cowbell is very prominent on this song. Um, so that's pretty much. I mean, yeah, this is this is what sticks on the what'll stick on the wall and just trying to find their way. You know, this is a, culminated from a few years of just trying to put songs together and uh, after being together for, for a few years, but um, I disagree with you on something there, John, like, um, you know, uh, th- when I think of throw, throw everything against the wall and see what sticks, I think of a, a lot of stylistic diversity. And I think, I think this is a pretty tight record. I mean, there's, mm-hmm. you got the two speed rockers, you got the two scorpions ballads. You've got um, something like hell driver is very much like take him in my heart. I mean, this is a, this is a, there's a lot of purpose here, right? This is That's definitely, true. we are trying to be a modern, you know, up to date heavy metal band, um, yeah. with not a lot of nonsense. So there's no, there's no real, real kraut rock, crazy schizophrenic diversity to this thing. Right. Which That's you kind of do get on fly to the rainbow and lonesome crow at least. Right. And maybe right. even a little in trance right. in trance is not even as tight as this record. I don't even think Virgin killers as tight as this record. I mean, this is, this is them really, like I say, anticipating the new wave of British heavy metal. Fair point. I'll, I'll go along with that. So, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think just styles of where they were wanting to take it, you know, you they pretty much would get away from the 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 ballad tendencies like of uh sea winds and songs like that so you don't have that kind of sound anymore and you know do they want to be this acdc on steroids and you know eventually they would morph into what we have come to love and know about um except so um yeah that's now- definitely missing here right i mean the the main thing we think about except as being that you know you know, doing this and the, you know, they just and Udo in there and, and being like this cross, you know, it's interesting how there's a lot of bands who you think of as crosses between Judas Priest and, uh, and ACDC, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Coney Hatch has said that about themselves. D Snyder says that about Twisted Sister, but except is kind of like that. So you're missing, you're missing all the ACDC in here. There's none of that anywhere. Right. Right. It's just the priest. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, John, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they didn't really do any kind of heavy big tours on this album, or did they? Uh, they did very little. And before I get to that, another sure. thing I wanted to mention, I was saying Wolf hadn't found his guitar sound quite yet. Udo hadn't found his voice yet either because he's actually singing in a higher register. And when they're doing something that's more like a power ballad, like, glad to be alone he his voice wasn't fully matured to do it like if you listen to this compared to it's hard to find a way from russian roulette which is a power about there he sounded really strong where here he didn't he didn't really have it down yet he just he his voice wasn't as udo like as it would be later like by breaker he had it yeah as far as his voice but here he was trying to find his voice as well. And they did a whopping four dates. Mm. <laughs> all right. Yeah, this will be quick. City, all in Germany. Um, City, uh, City Treff, 1979, May 19, May 20 of 1979. They also played the Brain Festival in 1979. Brain Records, cool. also on the bill. The only band I know is Electric Sun, Uli John Roth. Hmm. Anyone's Daughter, Epitaph, Goo, Guru Guru, Message, and Rufus. I mean, most of those have lots of albums out. I mean, those there's some you know hmm. semi-big bands there, right? Yeah. Hmm. 
I was, well, you, I'm glad you said that. Cause my next question was going to be, what do you know about these bands? Cause the only one I really know is electric sun. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, Epitaph had a ton of albums and anyone's daughter I've heard of. And what was the other, a uh, girl, girl is like a, like a can Henry cow, big, big. Deal. Oh, okay. Yeah. And <laughs> message and Rufus that or the other yeah. ones. And yeah, Jay-Z but... and S in Germany is the fourth one. Songs played off this album. Lady Lou, Tired of Me, Sea Winds, Take Them in My Heart, Free Me Now, and That's Rock and Roll. Sounds of War would later be played on the Breaker Tour. So there you nice. go. Wow. Nice. Good stuff. There you, Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Always, always, always fun to hear. The, the festival ones always are always interesting to hear because of, wow. I, again, I would never have known any of those bands. So that's uh, very cool to have that. So, uh, wow, there you go, folks. So we are have begun our, we have become, begun the accept journey. So, um, and so Martin, uh, what kind of things can you want to plug before we uh, sign off here? So uh, uh, just so we know where people can find you for those who don't know who you are, because I'm sure most of our subscribers know who you are, but uh, what kind of things can we plug for you? Yeah, martinpopoff.com for any of the books that are in print. The new Rainbow one, I'm actually just doing a site update right now. So the uh, Rainbow uh, Run with the Wolf, Rainbow uh, on record. And we've got the Queen live. We've got the um, Led Zeppelin uh, visual biography. Obviously, Contrarian's channel. We've got uh, my audio podcast, History in Five Songs with Martin Popoff. I'm up to 270 episodes of that. Uh, we've got Kicked in the Teeth, the ACDC podcast that I started with John Gaffney, which is kind of similar to what we're doing here. And it's that uh, they're next to each other in the record uh, record collection, of course, too. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's that's about it. Uh, that's that's what I've got going on. A few other book projects and things. But uh, yeah. And like I say, this unfortunately, this is way out of print. Um you know, I, I don't think I'm ever going to update it because I don't want to write full chapters on every one of the Mark Turnillo albums. I, I just find them very similar, really good, but very similar. Um, so this may not ever come back into print or if I change change the title somehow and just end it, you know, with with the Udo years, which is kind of what I did anyways. Right. Um, is, is that is that how far that one goes or where how? Where well, that I, I, I believe what I did. Let me see what I did here. I, I think I've every every album has a chapter and then um, right at the end, there might have been two of the Mark Turnillos. Um, let's see. Shake your hands. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I every album has a chapter until we get to chapter nine and chapter nine is Blood of the Nation, Stalingrad and Blind Rage. So kind of like my White Snake book where I just kind of cheesed out and did an epilogue for the later stuff. That's kind of what <laughs> I did here. Right. But now this is this is a good seven or eight years old now at this point. Yeah. But like I say, you can get this for like literally seven dollars US or whatever as an ebook if you're just dying to read it. Right. So nice. There you go. All so, right. John, you got your, uh, you just got another episode of uh, Smithereens Saturday that just popped up and, uh, and yes. then whatever else is, uh, comes along the pike. Uh, so be sh please be sure to go check out the Music Nut program if you haven't done so yet. Of course, you know, with me, like, share, subscribe, all those fun things. Uh, looking forward to doing this series uh, with, uh, like I said, what, there's like 18, 18 I mean, albums, something like that. 17 18 or something like that and we're going to have a different guest for every single album so that's going to be a lot of fun we're going to show you off to a bunch of different people most of them you already know some of them might be new so uh but hey stay tuned right so for martin popoff thank you for joining us for this first episode of this, this is a absolute blast hope we can get to get to do you do something else with you in the future uh of course for my co-captain, John, the music nut, John Clauser, Johnny Metal, the Metal Dad, saying rock forever, y'all. We'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.